Good morning. Whether you're with us in person or joining us online, thank you for joining us. It's our hope that as you've joined us today, that you feel the love of Jesus because love gathers here at DCOG. We have additional ministries available to each of you on Sunday mornings so that you can grow even deeper in your walk with Jesus. We offer BLTs, body life teams for adults and kids before service at 9 a.m. There's nursery care for our babies available during our BLT hour and church. The nursery is located at the west end of the building. There is Kids Church for ages five years through grade four that we dismiss throughout the service. They sing, hear the message about Jesus, and have a really fun time together. Now, during the week, there are life groups for adults for you to join that meet either here at the church or in people's homes. A Bible study for both men and women meet here on Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m., as well as our Purpose Youth Group. So if you have any kids that are between the ages of 5th and 12th grade, we welcome them to join the fun. Now, one of our ushers gave you a program as you came in that has info and activities going on here at DCOG. However, here are some things we would like for you to be aware of. We will be taking another trip to Branson, Missouri for the Jubilee Conference, April 24th through the 27th. This will include a conference with music by David Phelps, Ernie Haas and Signature Sound, Allison Spear, The Neelands, Karen Peck and New River, and many more wonderful groups. Tim Tebow will also be one of the speakers for this week. It will be held at the Wealth Theater. We will be attending the Jesus Musical at the Sight and Sound Theater. Transportation will be on a new charter bus and promises to be fun and exciting. The prices include the conference, lodging, transportation, and the Jesus Musical, but does not include your food. Make sure to sign up no later than January 31st of this next year. Spots are limited, so reserve your seats today and sign up either at the Welcome Center or at the iPad stations or on the website. Hope you can join the fun. We will once again be having a Christmas Eve service at 6 p.m. Come on out, bring your friends and family as we worship the Savior of the world being born, Jesus Christ. There will be a time of communion and a candle lighting time. The service will be for one hour only. We hope to see you here. There is a Bible study on prayer happening on Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. in the sanctuary. Don't miss out and we hope to see you here. Those that are fairly new to attending DCOG, we have tithing envelopes available for you. If you would like to start getting envelopes, please see one of our welcome team members in the lobby at the Welcome Center as you leave today, and we can get you set up of envelopes for 2022 year. If you already have tithing envelopes for the 2021 year, then your tithing envelopes are in the lobby waiting for you to pick up. We also have boxes on the wall as you leave the sanctuary where you can put your gifts and tithes in each week. You may either put your tithe, gift, or building fund, or faith promise gift in those boxes as you enter for the service or as you leave. Thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord and His church. If you haven't thought about it, now is the time to start considering where to allocate your year-end gifts. If you are looking for a place to gift dollars before the end of the 2021 year, please go to PushPay and submit your one-time gift to be used for ministries here at DCOG. You may also contact Nancy in the church office and she can help you out with that. This gift can impact the effectiveness of our ministries and help with our current building loan that we have. Thank you so much for your consideration of that year-end gift so we may even further God's kingdom here at Decatur Church of God. Again, thank you for joining us this morning. It's our hope that as we draw closer together, we draw closer and worship Jesus, for he is our reason for gathering and deserves all our praise and glory and honor. Go tell it on the mountain The one that we have been waiting for The king of our salvation Born on this day our Savior Christ the Lord Let's stand together Let's sing it Go tell it on the
Good morning. You may be seated. Welcome to our service today. So glad to have all of you with us and all of you who have joined in online. We welcome you into this worship service. Let's give God our full attention and praise as we pray together today. What a wonderful God, creator, father that you are to us. And we love you and we worship you today and thank you for your gift of Jesus Christ, your son, to the world that you love. And Father, we have come to celebrate together this time of year in which we remember the greatest gift given. As we worship here today, may our meditations and our prayers and our singing be of glory to you for you are worthy of all our praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, family. We light our third Advent candle, the candle of joy. The joy of the Lord makes our hearts sing. The joy of the Lord brightens our days and lightens our load. The joy of the Lord is unspeakable and full of glory. It helps us recall God's promises. The joy of the Lord is accessible every day, all day. It gives us the strength that we need to stand. You see, everything written in the days of old was recorded to give us instructions for living. We find encouragement through the scriptures and a call to perseverance that will produce hopeful living. I pray that our God, who calls you and gives you perseverance and encouragement, will join all of you together to share one mind according to Jesus, the anointed. In this unity, you will share one voice as you glorify the one true God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, the anointed one, our liberating King. We thank you, God, for loving us and sending us your Son that we might be saved. Father, we are forever grateful. Do you feel the world is broken? I do. Do you feel the shadows deep and sick? We do. Darkness found the light from getting through. We do. Do you win? 
wishing you could see it all made new.
We want to hear joyful sounds outside these walls. I got to tell you, I was with Jerry and I was with John. And I was different ones and we were ringing the bell out of Kroger's. Okay, I was singing the joyful sound. Okay? We want to sing it in here to Jesus this morning. Okay? You came and your heart isn't full of joy. Jesus is the source of that joy. Come on. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down as your people sing oh. we will rise with you lifted on here we go and the world will see church. Give praise to Jesus this morning. Amen. You may be seated. Hi, church family. I just wanted to pop in and let you know what's going on in the Dominican Republic. We are so grateful for your loving support of us every single month. But I wanted to invite you into prayer. Behind us, you can see we are booming and busting. 22 girls, it takes an army. And I would ask you to pray for these precious caregivers that are in the fire every single day, loving and, support and supporting and just walking with girls in freedom and healing. It is the hardest, most rewarding work, and we need your prayers. It is birthday season, so they're getting ready over there. We have another teenager in the house. Lord, have mercy. And over here on this side, we are stepping into more. We've been praying about the opportunity to hire more women, sell more bags, so that we can expand the work of New Hope, and it's happening. Can you see us? We're going up third floor. We are getting ready to finish this production facility so that we can put 25 women to work and hopefully welcome 20 more girls into our care in a new facility. We have just finished paying off the loan on that place and we're getting ready to make it secure and safe. And it is a whole new game for us. So I just ask for your prayers that God open up doors in the government that God show us what keeping girls safe and serving them well looks like. That God send us the staff to really love and serve well. And that we continue to expand our circle of support through donations and sales. So that we can, so we don't have to worry about the day to day, the bread and the beans and the rice. So I just, you know, it's so amazing the way that God brings together his body for his work. And I thank you for it and invite you in. God bless. Our children are dismissed to go to kids' church at this time. And as they are leaving, let me just say that this young lady that you have just seen uh, is going to be our speaker at Faith Promise uh, in February. 
And you can see she's a person of vision and a true commitment to the Lord. She's going to challenge us well. And as we come into the end of this, uh, this uh, calendar year, there are many opportunities to give to, to things that will make a difference through this church. Whether it's through faith promise, as uh, you finish up the year, you want to give more to missions, you're welcome to do that. Uh, whether it's to uh, uh, the building and facilities, whether it's through different ministries that we have at the church, uh, we encourage you to pray about it. And uh, that year in giving uh, will make a huge difference. And you can do that, as uh, you saw on the announcement uh, video earlier, as we were beginning, that um, you can give either through the tithe envelope, you can give through push pay. That's how I do it. I love it. It just, man, three strokes, I'm there. And uh, it's a blessing to give. And as we give, God blesses us to, to do even more. We become conduits of God's graciousness, not only to this church, but through this church, to the community around us and to the world, as you see, because we sponsor this ministry that uh, you seen here on the video. And you can give, uh, uh, we have offering boxes at the back of the church there next to the doors. And uh, I just want to commend you, congregation. You've been so faithful in giving. And, and uh, through this COVID season, we've learned how to give uh, quite uh, uh, quietly, and anonymously there in that box. And it's been incredible what you have done. And I just commend you all. You're a very loving, generous church. What a joy to be a part of all of you. We have a number of special requests before us today as we go to God in prayer. And uh, our hearts have been greatly uh, moved and saddened by the tornado outbreak across the southern part of, uh, of our country and, and the tremendous loss of life. We want to pray for them today. And we also want to pray for those in our church. Um, Phyllis Learman's uh, family, as uh, she passed away Friday evening, uh, 99 and a half years old, what a fruitful life. And if you didn't know Phyllis, I would go visit her from time to time and uh, she could keep me on my toes theologically as we talked about the Bible. She was an incredible, incredible lady. I love to visit her and, and uh, talk with her on the phone. And uh, we'll be seeing that service uh, Wednesday at, uh, at the funeral home. But uh, let's pray for the family. There are other needs. Uh, Norma Geyer has COVID and uh, uh, there are others in our church that are going through that. And we just want to remember all those around us as they struggle with illnesses of different kinds. Now let's pray for these that have been mentioned, those on your back of your worship folder. Pray for them. You know, every Tuesday afternoon, we have a ladies group that comes. They pray all across this church. They, pr they come in here and pray for these sections where you are seated. Somebody's already prayed for you. And uh, they pray for these needs listed on the back of your worship folder. This church is prayer conditioned, folks. God is in our midst. Let's pray. The privilege of prayer is one that you have given to us there is power in prayer. There is peace as we pray. There is strength as we turn to you, our Father, for we know you care about us. And you provide for our needs in ways that we cannot see and sometimes in ways we do not expect. Sometimes in ways that we didn't want, uh, we didn't expect it because we thought it'd be a different way. But Lord, you know what's best, and we trust you for all of that. And we just thank you, Lord, that this very moment, as a congregation, 
we turn our hearts and thoughts and requests to you. And our hearts do go out for all these across the south central part of our country that have been uh, so tragically affected by these tornadoes. These are things we cannot understand. They are part of life, but Lord, we can't understand when they strike. And we pray for the, for the brokenness, for this community that was just totally devastated, for lives that were lost and their families that mourn them, and for those uh, responders that are coming and those who are going to come in and help rebuild and those who feel led to give, to, to provide assistance. Lord, we pray that you will bring us all together in this country to respond to these needs in love. And your people, Lord, I know that in disasters, your people are at their best. And I know there are many of your people involved right now responding to these needs led by the gentle shepherd, the one who guides us even through the dark valleys of the shadows of death. So we pray for your miraculous love upon these who have lost their loved ones, these communities who have lost so much. May we not forget to pray for them this week and in the weeks to come. For we know that you are able to do exceedingly beyond what we are able to ask or think. Because prayer has a power that we do not comprehend, but we see as we pray. And for that same reason, Lord, we pray for these who have been mentioned in our worship folder today. We pray for Norma as she fights this COVID and there's others in our church going through this. Will you be with them? And bring them through, bring healing to their bodies. We thank you for Phyllis Lerman and, and her life, her faith, her commitment uh, to the word of God and for her family. We pray your anointing and blessing upon her family as they celebrate her rich and wonderful life this week. Lord, for these who have been listed before us, some who will be going through surgery, others who have, and you have brought them through. We give you thanks for answered prayer. Father, I want to thank you for this congregation. Their great generosity in the ministry of the kingdom of God. And as people have given today, or will give this week, Lord, I just pray your special anointing upon them as they serve as your conduits of grace and gifts to the ministry and to the needs of our church, our community, and the world that you love. For all these things, we'll give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Night of one Still in the sign, heaven's brilliance from above. Sing it. Light of glory, pierce the darkness. Mercy pierce my heart with love. This is Jesus, King of glory, here to rescue. Son of God who comes to save us, Prince of Peace and Lord of all. Oh, the mystery who could pass in church, God would
rejoice he is with us rejoice so oh, is here sing it rejoice he is with us rejoice so oh, is here sing it again rejoice he is with us rejoice God is here and love is reaching for the lost and least of me. Thank you, Pastor uh, Jamie and worship team. Uh, you just bless us week after week, and we sure appreciate you. Pastor Jamie uh, mentioned uh, ringing the bell at uh, Kroger's this week on Friday, and uh, boy, I heard some great things of, about that when uh, they were there. And uh, yesterday, I rung the bell from 10 to 11. And, um, man, it was fun. It was wonderful. And uh, one of the uh, fellows who works there uh, came up to me, and he said, man, we had this guy yesterday here, this, this group of guys that, uh, man, they were ringing the bells, and one of them was singing. Man, he was good. And he said, uh, he said uh, are you going to sing? And I said, if I sing, they'll empty that bucket. And I told him who we were and that we were helping uh, the Salvation Army because we believe in their mission and how much we appreciate the impact they have in this community. But I just want to thank our BLT group that headed that uh, project up. Uh, that was, um, that was um, no, it wasn't Karen. No, it wasn't John. Keep guessing, keep guessing. <laughs> Eric, wasn't it Eric's group that led that? <laughs> Sounds like. <laughs> oh, boy, you're with it today, Congress. I can tell you're with me. No, I, I think it was Eric's uh, class, wasn't it? Where are you, Eric? Uh, anyway, Linda Lehman led the project from the class. And, and uh, our BLTs are doing super ministries in this church. It's, it's usually pretty uh, low-key. You don't hear a lot about it, but I do because they report to me. And I, they tell me what they're doing. And, man, I'm just inspired by our, our BLT. It doesn't stand for bacon, lettuce, tomato. It stands for body life team because these teams put together their ministry to one another and uh, in the word of God and to the community and to the church. And they're all doing wonderful, wonderful things. Throughout this year, it's been incredible to watch them in action. And I, I thank the Lord for them. But uh, boy, this BLT project yesterday, it was so much fun and so inspiring. Uh, an hour just flew by like that. And uh, to watch people come in and uh, to be able to say, uh, good morning and thank you for your giving and God bless you. Merry Christmas. And they would 
say it back. And they just, people are generous and they're loving in this community. And uh, it's a joy to be here. And uh, it just made my day yesterday, maybe my weekend. Well, no, you make my weekend. But uh, it was just great. And, uh, and uh, that's what Christmas is all about, isn't it? Tis the season for giving. Christmas and giving are synonymous because it begins with our God in heaven who loved the world so much that he gave his only son. And that giving example emanates through his people to the world that he loves. Our text today comes from uh, Matthew, and it's about uh, the wise men as they visited uh, the Christ child. Follow along as I read. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This story of the wise men is associated with the very spirit of giving this season. The story of the wise men is more than a fable. Some people would equate it to be similar to Santa Claus or, you know, Frosty the Snowman. Mm -mm. The story is true. It's written in the Bible, which is inspired and given to us by God himself. All scripture is inspired by God. And if it's there, it has to be true. And there are some things we may not understand about the story because so much is not written. And historians and theologians have put a lot of energy trying to bring this all together to understand it all. There's enough information of what life was like in those days, twenty uh, two thousand years ago, and and uh, there's enough information of tradition of these wise men that helps us to understand what was going on when these wise men came from the east to visit the Christ child. Now there may have been more than just three wise men because oftentimes they traveled. In, uh, in large caravans. We don't know. But tradition gives us the name of three of the wise men, and uh, it leads us to the understanding of what was going on at that time. These wise men were, at that time, 2,000 years ago, astrologers and philosophers and ed educators who saw the divine alignment of the heavens and a bright, beautiful star in the heavens that they identified as a king star in their own scientific educational discipline. And as they looked up and saw that star, they followed that star to where it would lead them to the Christ child because this king star was the star of one who would change the world. You see what's happening here? God was reaching out to them in their own language. He understood where they were coming from and he reached out to them. He was announcing his gift to the world. He first announced that to the Virgin Mary, who said, how can this be? And the angel promised her that this was of God, and this child 
uh, would redeem the world. This announcement was next given to an unborn child by the name we would understand as John the Baptist when he was uh, fully grown. And his mother, Elizabeth, who had been uh, assumed to be on childbearing years, and yet God gave her this gift of a, of a child. And by the way, uh, John the Baptist, that would make him a cousin to Jesus our Lord. This announcement was given to Joseph, who would be the earthly father of Jesus. This announcement then came to the shepherds outside of Bethlehem as they too went to see the Christ child and then to these wise men so far away, probably a thousand miles away, taking them anywhere from three to six months in order to get to Bethlehem and visit this Christ child to see for themselves this gift of love that would change the world. What is Christ's message to us today? In our language, in a language that we can understand, in the language of a Christ child, a little baby born and laid in a manger. You look at those precious little children as they come into the world, and who cannot understand how precious life is? What a wonderful gift these children are. I get to see that every day at our daycare and preschool. It, it's heart-wrenching. I just This grandpa in me just wants to reach out to all of them, but there's uh, limitations, so I just wave at them, and I make faces at them. And they love it. <laughs> In a language God knew, we would all understand. He is saying to us, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Here's my gift to you. That thought has overwhelmed me this Christmas season. But today I want to ask you, what's on your gift list this year? May I strongly urge you to give these three gifts? First of all, give the gift which is fitting for the king. King Jesus. The wise men as they traveled, as we know, three of them identified. The first one was Malchor from Persia, who gave the gift of gold to the Christ child as they knelt there before him. They had followed the king star, and the most appropriate gift for a king in those days was a priceless gem, a priceless gift. And they gave him the gift of gold because there was nothing greater than gold in those days. They had to be aware as they knelt before this child that the greatest gift in all the world, the most priceless gift was lying in a manger before them and they worshiped him it was the gift of their creator given to his created ones he deserved their finest gift for God so loved the world that he gave so what's on your gift list What's the finest gift you could give Jesus this year? Well, the finest gift, is you probably don't have all the gold in the world. You probably don't even have gold coins at home. Well, some of you might. God doesn't need our gold. He wants you. 
So the finest gift you can give this year is yourself to God and his son, Jesus Christ. Some of you are here today, perhaps you've never done that. You've never given your life to Jesus. He's asking you, will you give me your life? Will you let my son come into your heart, cleanse you from sin, and will you let my spirit come in and fill you with a new life and strength? That first time decision, if you've not made that first time decision to Jesus, why not today? Why not allow Christ to come into your life and let him change your life for the good and for eternity? Some of you are listening online and maybe you need to do this. You need to give your life to Jesus. Give up the old life and experience the new life that only Christ can give. The life that is abundant and eternal for which Jesus came to die on a cross to pay the price for our sins, to give you this gift of eternal life. Won't you let him come in? Won't you give your life as the most priceless gift to the Savior? And some of you, maybe you've done that, but, you know, maybe that gift needs to be polished up. You know what I mean? Maybe you need to recommit yourself to a deeper, stronger relationship with Jesus Christ. And you can do that right now. And you need to. Because the one who is speaking your language is calling out to you and saying, Give me your all. Your most priceless gift. And see what I can do with that gift when you just turn your life over to me. And let me come in. It was Christina Rossetti, 150 years ago, who wrote these words that we've heard probably many times. She wrote these words, what can I give him, poor as I am? I mean, what do I have to give Christ? If I were a shepherd, I would bring him a lamb. Yeah. And if I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? I will give him my heart. Give the priceless gift which is fitting for the king. The second gift I would urge you to give this year is the gift of a fragrant aroma of Christ to those around you. A fragrant aroma of Christ to those around you. The wise men came and they knelt before Jesus there in the home. One of them, tradition tells us, was Balthasar. He's from Ethiopia in the Arabian Peninsula area. And he presented unto the Christ the gift of frankincense. It was a resin, gum, sort of incense of the Boswellian tree used for making perfume and incense in that day. And even today, it's an essential oil that people use. In those days, it was valued as a perfume that was used in worship and public celebrations. And so it was quite normal for this, this king, this earthly king, to bow before the king of kings and lay before him the gift of frankincense, a celebration, a fragrance that would, would change the world through the centuries the gift of frankincense has become symbolic of holiness and righteousness in the Christian church and in our celebrations and, and special services in the church around the world for 2,000 years. This 
this frankincense has often been used in the assemblies of God's people, bringing a beautiful scent into the community of those who have gathered. And it has represented holiness and righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is a condition and it's a position. The position, if you can picture it, is one of standing before God. Standing before God. And as you stand there before God, it's with the recognition that your only worthiness of standing before him is because he has forgiven you. And so as you take this position, you're in a new condition standing before God, and that condition is one of rightness. No longer is sin bound upon you, but you stand before him in in what the Bible describes symbolically as a white robe of righteousness. You stand before him justified. Your sins have been forgiven and wiped away. And you stand as a justified person before God just as if I had not sinned. Because Jesus Christ has taken away the sins of the world. And when you come to Jesus, you have your sins cleansed from your life. So what is holiness? Well, it's living the righteous life. Holiness is living a life of integrity and purity and honesty, and generosity, and justice, and love for others. I like to call it godliness in motion. Letting the love and the purity of my Lord and Savior live in me, and living it out in the community where I live in the world that God loves. That's holiness. And so there are things we do not do. And in the church we've gotten, in the past we've gotten so focused on what you don't do that we forget the joy of what we ought to be doing. But you know what? The only question you need to answer is, is what I'm doing bringing honor and glory to the Lord and is it demonstrating to the world this integrity of, of Christ and this purity and this honesty this generosity this justice and this love for others the apostle Paul told the church at Corinth he says we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are being who are pe- perishing. We are the aroma of Christ. I think back of many people in my lifetime that have demonstrated the aroma of Christ to me. One of those dear friends of mine years ago, his name was Doug. He's still living among us. I don't get to see him often, don't communicate with him often, but he was a man of unprincipled character, a man of God who demonstrated holiness and who proclaimed righteousness in how he lived. Doug, at the time I knew him, was uh, working uh, in a secular job, but his real avocation was discipleship. He worked with navigators and trained others in developing discipleship groups and 
and he had a group of men always with him that he would meet with and he would train them in discipleship. He was a man of great integrity and, and in his mid-40s, he and his wife went down to Florida to a discipleship uh, training event and when they, when they finished that event, Doug said to his wife, Judy, he said, man, does it get any better than this? I mean, they are so thrilled. The next day, they headed home to Michigan. And they were involved in a head-on crash. For Doug, it just broke bones in his body. For his wife, Judy, not only the broken bones, but severe head trauma. They wondered for a long time if she would even live. And constantly, Doug was thinking to himself, I thought it couldn't get any better. Why, why this? His life was tragically changed. And then Judy did come through. She, did, she was healed. But she continued to live with the effects of that severe brain injury. Her personality changed. And Doug had to adjust to, to a whole new wife. It was difficult to make such an adjustment in the months and years that followed. His closest friends through Navigator said, Doug, we can't explain why this had to happen, why it did happen. But we can tell you now, as a man of God, you have a greater opportunity than ever before to demonstrate to all men what it's like to be faithful to your wife, for better, for worse. Doug and I were close enough, he often shared with me the struggles. But he was always faithful, even to this very day, he is faithful to his wife. So much different than when they first married in the first half of their life together. But a man of integrity, a man who was a fragrant aroma of Christ to the world around him. Won't you give that gift this year to the world around you? Be the very aroma of Christ wherever you go. And the third gift I would call upon you to give this year is the gift of healing to the world that God loves. The third wise man we read gave the gift of myrrh. Tradition says the wise man's name was Caspar from India. And as he knelt before the Christ child, he gave this gift of myrrh. They were recognizing Jesus' key role in bringing peace and healing to the world. Myrrh was a resin and gum from a bushy tree. They would scrape it out from the roots. It was an essential oil, too, in those days. It was used to help reduce swelling and stop pain and provide healing. But it was also used in burial, providing balm and aroma for the dead. It had the smell of wood, and sometimes it would be from bitter to sweet in its smell, but they used it almost as a, as a foretelling of what Jesus Christ would do for them one day as he died there on that cross for you and for me. I'll never forget when we lived in Africa the man and his son who took care of all of our automobiles, uh, we, we were about 45 minutes from Kasumu. And this man, we'd drive in, and our vehicles would be all broken up, and he'd put them back together and make them run like a new one. 
Natu was his name. He was from Indian descent. He was a Hindu. When I went to his funeral, he lay in, in his house. The family had prepared the body with these fragrances, bringing sweetness to the air, bringing preservation to the body. As the Father has sent me, Jesus said, even so send I you. When we have Christ living in us, we too can provide the healing balm in our world, and that's our mission. Jesus has sent us into the world to be his hands, his feet, his voice, his compassion to a world that sorely needs it. We are living in a broken world. We are living in hard times, much like they were in Jesus' day when he was born. And just as Jesus Christ came to change the world, we've been called to do that as well. Right after Chris and I got to Africa, 20 years ago, almost. I've shared this story before. Some of you haven't heard it. I'm sure many of you online have not heard it. But I'll never forget it. It was Christmas time. We went to uh, Kusumu for our shopping. And as we drove in, it's just a small area of parking. And then the, the buildings, the shopping center. And it's not like what you have today here. It was very confined, but people would come and do their shopping. That's where we got our groceries and standing at the entryway going into uh, this Nakumat supermarket, which wasn't any bigger than this room probably. They had a Santa Claus up there, and it, it was animated, singing that great Christmas song, Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ting, tang, walla, walla, bing, bang. Really made our Christmas. <laughs> After we did our shopping, we came out. We were with our dean, and she wasn't quite done, so we put our, our groceries in her car and waited for her. And as we were waiting in this very tight parking lot, all of a sudden, a naked man appeared. Don't look, Chris! Don't. The crowd had gathered around him. And they were mocking him and pushing him. And he was afraid. You could tell he wasn't in his right mind. And he was, he was driven to madness and wondering, who will help me? And, and the Police officers were there, and they were beating them, beating him with their rubber uh, uh, mallets, uh, belts. They were beating him, and he was crying out. And all of a sudden, in all of this melee and all of this chaos, and we were standing there, and he was as close to us as Chris is to me right now. And we were wondering what's going to happen next, and all of a sudden, Another African man steps in and he says, stop. Everyone got quiet. The police backed off. And as he stood just like this, looking at the crowd, I saw Jesus. You and I are called to intervene. And for 
God to work his way in our lives and in our world so that we can stop the chaos and madness of this world. So what do you have on your gift list this year? How about giving the ultimate gift this year of yourself to Jesus Christ and the world he loves? How about giving the aroma of Christ in a dark and despondent world? How about bringing Christ hope and healing to those who are spiritually dead and those who are overcome with sadness and pain and make this world a better place? Tis the season for giving. And if you have all, if you have Jesus in your life, you have all these things to give. It's the only answer for the world today. And this Christmas time, we can give these three gifts that will change the world. Father, I pray as these words have been delivered, those who have been listening will apply it to their lives and to the world around them. May we surrender ourselves to you and, and give you these priceless gifts. For we have nothing else to give but ourselves. But when we do, you are able to do exceedingly beyond what we could even ask or think. As the Father has sent Jesus, Lord, send us into your world that you love, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. What can we bring? skies of Bethlehem appear to star while angels sing to lonely shepherds three wise men seeking truth they travel from afar hoping to find the child from heaven falling on bow before the humble Prince of Peace. I bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth deserves the praises that I see. Jesus, when you receive the honor that you're due, Stacey. i 
Thank you, Pastor, for reminding us of those gifts. This is interesting, you know. Um, he was mentioning, you know, ringing before and just encountering people. I, this season, you never know who you're going to encounter as you, um, you think of joy. Sometimes I was sharing in the side room that, you know, sometimes... In this joyous season, it's very hard to find joy. Maybe joy can be found in you uh, with Jesus Christ living in you. I want to remind you as you leave today, the ushers will have cards uh, for our Christmas Eve service. And so take one, take two, take three, uh, as many as you can to invite some friends and loved ones. We'll be for one hour only, but they do have them. They're, they're really nice. They have the time on them in the, in the church address. So hopefully... Um, uh, you can invite a friend or loved one to that on Christmas Eve night. So uh, make sure you stop out in the lobby and see those things out there. Uh, we hope that you've seen Jesus today. Pray with me. Father, thank you so much for um, allowing us to worship you and exalt your son Jesus, the baby in the manger, uh, the savior for the world. And uh, Father, we just, uh, we love you. We love your son Jesus. It's in his risen name. That we worship today. Amen. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain. The one that we've been waiting for. The King of salvation born on this day our Savior Christ alone singing go tell it on the mountain Come on. go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere that we can be Oh 